This lecture focuses on the other important gastrointestinal parasitic infections, namely giardiasis, balantidiasis, and the so-called non-pathogenic intestinal protozoan infections. You will now embark on a journey of knowledge. You have no choice but to finish this lecture, so just sit back, relax, open your mind, and free some space for the e-learning of the lifetime. Giardiasis is caused by Giardia lamblia, or Giardia intestinalis, which is the only pathogenic intestinal flagellate known to infect humans. It has two morphological forms, namely trophozoite and cyst. The trophozoite is actively motile and the invading stage of the parasite and lives on the villi of the small intestine. The trophozoites can be distinguished from all other human intestinal protozoans by their characteristic pear or teardrop or kite-like shape the presence of eight flagella attached to a central axostyle, a ventral adhesive disc, and the presence of two distinct nuclei. The cyst is an active, non-motile, and non-invading stage of the parasite and responsible for the transmission of the disease to others through the fecal-oral roots. Cysts are ellipsoidal and usually contain two or four nuclei, and the axostyle and even the flagella can sometimes be seen inside the cyst. Take note of the morphologic similarities and differences of a cyst and a trophozoite. Please watch this short YouTube video of what Jarja looks like under a microscope. Giardiasis is acquired by ingestion of infective cysts from contaminated food, drink, fingers, etc. Following ingestion, a cyst opens up in the duodenum to release a trophozoite. The trophozoite attaches to the intestinal wall by a sucking disc for nourishment and multiplies by binary fission. When the environment becomes unfavorable, the trophozoites and cysts in the large intestines. These cysts are passed in the feces and may remain viable for as long as three months in cold, fresh water, but do not tolerate heat and desiccation. Trophozoites usually disintegrate and die quickly on exposure to the external environment. Georgia lamblia only requires one host to complete its life cycle. Giardiasis is one of the most common parasitic infections having a worldwide distribution and occurring both in developed and developing nations. In Africa, Asia, and Latin America, about 200 million cases has been estimated to occur annually. In Ethiopia, surveys across all regions of the country showed Giardiasis prevalence to be around 10% in the 1970s and early 1980s and it is more common in children than in adults. The infections may occur in one of the following three epidemiological patterns. Number one, endemic, as in the tropics where fecal-oral transmission is common. Number two, sporadic, as in travelers. And number three, epidemic, as waterborne or institutional outbreaks. In endemic areas, Children, particularly those who are malnourished, are more frequently infected than adults. The waterborne route is the main way of transmission, though foodborne transmission can also occur. Ingestion of as few as 10 cysts is sufficient to cause infection in humans. Stool microscopy is still the diagnosis of choice for giardiasis and visualization of the trophozoite and or cyst in diarrheic stools is diagnostic for the disease. Direct fecal smear can be used since stains and stain preparations destroy the trophozoites. Under DFS, one can appreciate the falling leaf motion of the trophozoite. Macroscopically, the stool is usually offensive, bulky, pale, non-bloody, mucoid or fatty, or watery. Giardiasis is treated with metronidazole, tinidazole, or nitazoxanide. Treatment of family members may be indicated to prevent reinfection. 
Balantidium coli is an intestinal protozoan that causes a rare human disease called balantidiasis. Balantidium coli is the only protozoan ciliate which is pathogenic to humans. Under the microscope, it exhibits a characteristic rolling motion. Acute balantidiasis is characterized by gastrointestinal signs and symptoms with explosive diarrhea. Sometimes, fetid breath can be observed from the patient. Complicated balantidiasis can lead to ulcers or even perforation, leading to peritonitis. Extra-intestinal symptoms include urinary tract infections and vaginitis. This disease is more common in pigs, thus people working with pigs are the most at-risk group. Infection is gained through the fecal-oral route, particularly with contaminated drinking water. The parasite naturally lives in the cecum and colon of humans. Please take note of the morphological characteristics of the parasite. Take note of the large kidney-shaped macronucleus on both forms, as well as prominent cilia and cytostome in trophozoites. Stool examinations may yield trophozoites most of the time, with cysts being seen infrequently, usually in dehydrated stools. Please Google Tenesmic Stools and share your findings in the comments below. Three medications are often used to treat Balantidium coli, tetracycline, metronidazole, and iodoquinol. Dientamoeba fragilis is an intestinal protozoan that was first identified as an amoeba but later reclassified as a flagellate. Morphologically, it looks like trichomonas but without the flagella. Similar to trichomonas, and unlike most intestinal protozoans, it only occurs as a trophozoid. Dientamoeba fragilis usually resides within the large intestines, where it causes intermittent mucoid diarrhea, colicky abdominal pain, abdominal tenderness, bloating sensations, and flatulence. Bowel hypermotility, eosinophilia, and anal pruritus are also commonly associated with infections. Unlike most intestinal protozoan, dientamoeba fragilis infections are also common in developed countries such as Germany and Holland. Some literature states that D. fragilis can be found in enterobius eggs, which are transmitted via direct human-to-human -human interactions. The pinworm association is also a suspect in some of the signs and symptoms associated with D. fragilis infections. Eosinophilia, for instance, has been attributed to pinworm co-infection since D. fragilis is not invasive in the large intestines. Anal pruritus, seen in diagnosed D. fragilis cases, has also been attributed to pinworm co-infection. While direct transmission is possible, fecal-oral transmission is still the main mode of transmission of the parasite. Due to the strong association between the two parasites mentioned above, cases of either parasite should be further investigated for the possibility of infection of the other. Non-pathogenic intestinal protozoa are single-celled parasites commonly found in the intestinal tract. They are passed out in stools, much like pathogenic protozoans. Cysts are typically found in formed stool, whereas trophozoites are typically found in diarrheic stool. Humans get these organisms when they ingest food or water contaminated by stools of other infected individuals. The non-pathogenic intestinal protozoa include Calomastix meslini, Endolimax nina, Entamoeba coli, Entamoeba dispar, Entamoeba hartmani, Entamoeba pulecki, and Iodamoeba bushli. Entamoeba coli has 1 to 8 nuclei, usually more than 4, with eccentric chariosomes. Endolimax nina is very similar to Entamoeba coli but with four nuclei. Iodamoeba bushli has a large glycogen mass or vacuum. Entamoeba despar is morphologically similar to the pathogenic Entamoeba histolytica. However, it is considered as an intestinal commensal and is not capable of causing invasive or extra-intestinal complications. These organisms do not harm the body and are never associated with illness even with people with weak immune systems. Persons who are found to have these protozoa 
and also have intestinal distress should be further examined for other causes of their symptoms. Now the question really is, what is the significance of studying these non-pathogenic protozoans in the first place if they do not cause any known disease in man? Please think about it and write your answers on the comments below. Well, that's everything. Thanks for watching.